Joe Perry asked Heavy, Where's that? Back up. Why don't you tell us the first time you met her? The first time I met them? Yeah. John Claude and got you to write with them. Well, that's what I mean. That's what I'm like about to do that. Yeah. So when he said you get the opportunity to write, I'm going, great. So I came up with all my Aerosmith heavy sort of stuff. I go, I they fly me to Boston, and as a songwriter, you walk in completely not even a clue what the egos and insecurities are or anything. You walk in, and there I am with Joe Perry. And he's like a rock guy, you know, curvy black hair, a waxed chest, and he's got like a nine pack, and he's just standing there. <laughs> Looked like, just like a rock god. That was the good news. But the bad news is, he had the personality of an oil painting. Now, I could usually talk, I could talk to a shrub. Hey, Joe, how's it going? Is it going to be here me to write a song? Yeah, great. Hey, how about those Boston Red Sox? Man, they won, they won, aren't they really? Yeah. Great. And I'm thinking, oh my God, this is going to be like a root canal. All of a sudden, a car screeches up. Door opens up, and there he was. Child-bearing lips, holding on to a model airplane with two different shoes going, and it was him. And I went, thank God, someone like me. And I swear to God, I've never seen a mouth that bad. It's like a Puerto Rican family living in a the largest mouth that I've ever seen in my existence. And so we're sitting down there, and it's, and it's a weird thing as a songwriter when you're working with a fan, when you're a fan of the people that you're working with, you're in awe of what they do, but you can't let them see that. So you have to act cooler than you're really feeling. And I was doing that once Stephen watched uh, it. Like Joe was on Night Cool, there was a whole other guy. But when he the car, it was incredible. So they go, What do you have? And I come up with all of my. Um, my Aerosmith rippy things, and, and Stephen goes, you know, that's great and all, but then, what, would, what would be something you would play for us that you would do? Now, no one as a co-writer had ever asked that for me in my life. Like, what's something that you love? Forget Aerosmith, forget trying to please us. What would be something that you would believe in? At that point in my life, I was very disillusioned with music, because everyone was sort of writing, you know, let's hear it for the bar. And dancing, and no music had a lot of value to me. John Lennon being my greatest inspiration, I was thinking, who's doing Imagine? Who's doing Instant Karma? Who's doing any of these things that make a difference? And nobody was. So I had this little song that I kind of came up with, thinking of John Lennon. And it was just, you know, something's wrong with our eyes. And Stephen goes, stop! 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 I was just, well, I, I wanted him to say stop again, just so I could look inside his mouth. And this kind of car dealership was like, it was unbelievable. And he goes, let us in the room, let us in the room. And he goes, play the rest of it. So I played him the rest of the song. He fell in love with it. Joe actually started playing a guitar with it. And the next thing you know, the song, sort of, even though a lot of it was prepared ahead of time, ended up writing itself. Now, it, it comes out, it was the first single from Get a Grip, it becomes a Grammy and a Flammy, I become a genius in my own pants, and people want to work with me, and I don't know why, because I'd written the song like six years before I brought it to them. So I wasn't sure I was any more or less talented than I was actively in music here. But because we're short on time, I will do the song now, and then the thing about the song to me is the song in this day and age. If you think about when John was writing stuff like Instant Karma and Power of the People and Imagine, I think the way we are, in, at least in my country now, is we're pretty screwed up. Uh, we're in a war that we can't get out of, we have a president that can't spell, and, and I think that the song means more now than it probably did 